Hey everybody, it's Bobo the Vulture, and it's time for more Let's Play Extreme Warfare Revenge. Uh, let's look at... let's take a meeting. Let's meet with our personal assistant, Sophie. Um, market's heading toward a boom period. We have 12 workers on the roster. We need to hire a road agent in the backstage area. It will be chaos. Well, we're doing alright for now, um, but that is good to note. Um... Let's look quickly at, let's look at Japan. Basically, note, these workers are committed to touring with a promotion for some parts of the year. When not on tour, they're available to work for U.S. promotions. So, like, All Japan Pro Wrestling. These are the, these are the days that All Japan Pro, or New Japan. New Japan's another good one. Gato and Jado. Um, but these are all wrestlers that uh, have contracts, and this is the next year's worth of tour dates, and include travel times. So you'll see Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So Saturday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So four days there um, in a shot where these particular wrestlers will not be available um, to wrestle. And so that's something to bear in mind when you're hiring guys, especially guys with open contracts, um, that uh, if they have an open contract with another company that's a North American fed, I don't think they bother to program in scheduling conflicts, but for them to travel to Japan, I guess the idea is, well, maybe they could just get in a car, and if you had a show on Friday and the other guys had a show on Saturday, they could just get in the car and drive all day and get to the other show or hop a plane or whatever. But um, these are, you know, these are the next year's shows for Japan. And so, you know, you'll see all these various guys. Some of them, oh, Battle Arts apparently has nobody signed. Men's Teo is there for Big Japan. But yeah. That's a thing that's happening. Uh, what are some of these other things? Uh, stables, titles, we don't have any of that stuff, I suppose. It would be nice. Television, we don't have. We're not big enough for television. Events, event history. And you can see the ebb and flow of the show. The best segment in terms of audience response was an interview with Conrad. So, that's a thing. He's a good guy to get everybody warmed up, apparently. And that was our best show. Our best ever show. Because it's our only show. Uh, look at the titles, look at stables. I don't have enough uh, guys, honestly. Things like, uh, you know, like I'm not, I, I'm not going to open up, uh, I'm not going to open up a tag team division or stables until I can get some guys on written contracts, because if you're, you know, setting up tag team wrestling matches, then you're doubling the amount of guys that you got to pay to make that one show. If you've got them all on a monthly retainer, it doesn't really matter. You could put your entire roster on a given night, or you could just put on, like, eight guys. It doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it matters in terms of their morale. Uh if you don't give guys work, they'll get angry. Um, so, there's that. Let's see here. Ah, uh, but feuds. This is the feuds. This is the feud screen. You got major feuds. You got other feuds. I am gonna go ahead and set up singles feuds going to set up a feud between Anthony Bartlett Jr. I don't know, between... Yeah, between Anthony Bartlett Jr. and Conrad. Start the feud. Do you want to start a feud between these guys? Sure. Yes. I'll ask Sophie about it. You need to build up this rivalry. Use matches, interviews, and angles to heat things up. So, that's a thing. So basically what I'm going to do now is uh, 
going to have an angle between those two guys, and they will, uh, they'll be involved in matches. They'll be involved in matches. They'll also be involved in the interview segments um, for the shows. Because as you recall, we need to have um, six segments, at least six segments in four matches. So we need at least two interview or angle segments. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and have those guys each do some mic work. And uh, that'll build up their feud, build up their rivalry. And I think just to keep things simple right now, I'm just going to do one feud at a time. Eventually, I'll have like major feuds and then some other feuds and, you know, the minor feuds might not even have a mention every like show, but uh, it's all right. For this right now, it's probably going to be a feud that sort of dominates what's going on and uh, builds up quickly. Of course, all this said, I get the feeling that then, like, Anthony Bartlett Jr. and Conrad are both going to end up, like, leaving the company. But let's go ahead and click over to the next day. So, let's start the show with, uh, with an interview. So that worked well last time. It'll be a single worker interview. And it will be with... Yeah, I'm going to start with Conrad again. Because last week, Conrad lost. You know, lost this match due to heel cheating tricks. And so he is going to call out Anthony Bartlett Jr., and for select interview purpose, you will now see it's not just self-promotion or hype upcoming match. It's continue feud. So there. Done booking that segment. So that's going to be how we start things up. And let's take a look at the stats of all of our wrestlers again. Conrad, who could Conrad have a good match against? Do we have any other real high-quality brawlers? We've got Felcher. I bet Felcher and Conrad could have a decent match. As a matter of fact, that's what the main event tonight is going to be. Felcher versus Conrad. Main event tonight. A one on one matchup. Singles match. It's going to be Felcher versus Conrad. And there is not going to be a title involved. The winner will be Felcher. Because Anthony Bartlett will come in. Actually, no. Take that back. The result will be Conrad wins. Conrad wins cleanly. And then afterwards, there will be a run in attack on Conrad. And in addition to putting on a good match, this match will serve to continue the feud. Basically, if you want anything that you're doing to work towards a feud, you have to select continue feud as the purpose, even if it might be secondary to the match. And if you want it to count like, oh, because they literally do chalk up, this is the number of in-game, like in-simulation events that went in the favor of one wrestler versus this is the number of in-game simulation events that went to the other. Like, basically, the idea is if all of the events that took place across the feud went in favor of one guy, the other guy basically gets buried. Like, he, you know... 
he loses out he loses a lot of popularity because he just looks really bad because he never got to come out on top so let's continue this feud and let's complete booking this segment how good is Felcher on the mic? Felcher's hot on the mic. Can I book an angle? I can book an angle. Nope, I can't. I don't have enough writers to use angles. That's all right. Later on, I'll hire a bigger writing staff. Fine then, I'll just do an interview. Actually, no, maybe I'll do that later. Let's figure out what the rest of the matches that we're going to have for this show are going to be. Hmm. You know what? El Magito and Marcos look like they could have a not half bad match. Although El Magito wants to be higher on the card. All these guys think they're upper mid guard. I'm just noticing that now. Even though, geez, Jarrell Clark is damn talented, and he thinks he's just a mid-carder. I guess I won't disavow him of that. It means that I can use him however I want. He'll be thankful if I put him up in the uh, top card. Actually, Magic? Or Magic. Everyone would like to say that. Magic? And Jarrell Clark could probably put on a pretty good match. I like that idea. I do want to try and uh, mix up the uh, mix up the participants in my matches as much as I can. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to hire a bunch of different dudes. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and put uh, Jarrell Clark and Magic in a match. Or magic. Match one versus one. Singles. All right, Jarrell Clark, just remember, I know that you're used to being a heel. But I want you to be a face in this match. And this one is going to go to Magique. Magique is going to win it cleanly. And in the aftermath... You know, in the aftermath, they brought it back. Because that's just how... Hardcore they are. No, you know what? The aftermath, we don't need to have anything happen. Now, we'll have Magic celebrate. How's that? No, I tell you what, Jarrell Clark is going to be... There you go. He lost clean, but he can't deal with it. And the purpose is to put on a good match. Yeah. Let's complete booking that segment. And let's see who else we want to include. We want to find a match for Anthony Bartlett Jr. Somebody with good technical wrestling skills. Akimon has good technical wrestling skills. Who else could put on a technical match? Is there anybody else who's a weak speed wrestler? 
now. Hmm. At this point, I'm actually also just trying to figure out who would be a good face for him to fight. There are all these things that you've got to figure out. Now let's throw him in with uh, El Magito. Versus one singles Anthony Bartlett Jr. versus El Magito. There is no title on the line. The result will be hmm. Let's go ahead and make this a win for Anthony Bartlett Jr. Just because it would look weird for him to lose his his match while he's in the middle of a big feud. Especially since I don't plan on making Conrad involved in this result. Anthony Bartlett Jr., once again, though, he resorts to cheating. He's just a bad dude. Oh, here you go. Here's the way to make him uh, look like a badass. Anthony Bartlett Jr. wins. Clean. And then uh, he cheap shots, offers the handshake, gives him a cheap shot. Classic move. It can be overused, but I don't know that the uh, simulation does that very much. Put him on, putting on a good match. So let's complete booking that segment. So now we need one more match in here. Who's on the roster? Axel Law, you're decent, but not really that great. Let's go back. Who hasn't debuted? Axel Law, Jarrell Clark, Majik, and Marcos. Well, Majik and Jarrell Clark are going to debut. Alright, how about Axel? Well, let's put Axel Law and Marcos in a match then. Would that work? Are they any good? Well, they're both heels. All right, so we're going to debut one or the other of them. How's that? All of a sudden, it looks like everyone's a heel, but they're not. Um, let's go ahead and get a match. Let's get Akiman in a match with uh, with Axel Law. Now with Marcos. Yeah. Akiman, you're going to have a match 
with Marcos. How's that? Marcos versus Akimon. There is no title. Um, the result goes to Marcos because it's his debut, you know. Give the kid some break. Select the aftermath. Uh, Marcos runs off. And the purpose is to debut Marcos. There we go. That's solid booking right there. And then let's have, uh, well, let's exit out of here real quick. Let's have an interview segment. And the interview will be a single worker interview, and it will be Felcher. Fel Felcher will get the mic again. And this time it's just going to be Felcher talking about how cool he is. And now, right before his big match, Anthony Bartlett Jr. is going to come out here and cut a promo. Dis and Conrad. And the reason will be he's trying to continue their feud. And now, do either Majik or Jarrell Clark have any charisma? Majik kind of does. What about Marcos? No. But Akimon does. Let's have Akimon come out here and do a uh, do an interview in which he promotes himself. Single worker. Akimon. He's not got any problems with anybody. He's just coming out here to talk about how cool it is to be Akimon. And, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. It's very interview heavy, but, uh, interview segments are kind of nice because, uh, there's less that can go wrong with them, uh, provided you've got somebody with good, uh, charisma out there. I guess probably production values matter to a certain extent with them, but, uh, I got a decent feeling about this. So let's go ahead and start the show. Now, this may be a little bit of overkill on Anthony Bartlett Jr. and Conrad, um, but I'll probably get notes about that if, uh, if that's correct. Let's start the show. 53%. See, that's not a bad segment. Conrad talking about that feud. Oof. It's an okay match. It's not a great match. Ba -da -ba -da -bum. Spellbinder, it's finished. Drill Clark goes nuts, screaming and yelling at everybody. Way to throw a tantrum. Felcher's backstage. See, 56%. I was thinking about these, the overall rating. You don't have the audience reception dragging it down. Dragging it down. So, uh, as long as you got pretty good talkers. It'll be okay. And see, the crowd reactions are going up a little bit. This wasn't even a very good match. So, uh, that's good to know. Marcos and Akiman would not necessarily make a great rivalry. Um, so, cool, man. Let's try next. Anthony Bartlett Jr. ripping into Conrad. That's good stuff. Good entertainment. And now Anthony Bartlett has his match with El Magito. That's a pretty good match. The crowd's not really into it, but they apparently never are. Hardback suplex on Boss. Boss! 
Jazz. Anthony Bartlett Jr. attacks with some poorly executed flying moves. Well, that's good to know. He's not a very good high flyer, guys. Oh, right. And I guess uh, Anthony Bartlett Jr.'s nickname is Boss, and El Majito's nickname is Midget. Alright. Super kick. One, two, three. El Majito offers a handshake. And he accepts it. No, Anthony Bartlett Jr. levels measure with a cheap shot. Super kick! Akiman hyped himself up, talked about what he was going to do. That's a pretty good match, too. Felcher versus Conrad. Again, above average. Mike Sanders' uh, overall rating for it. Um... The crowd, yeah. See, the crowd, we're actually starting to get the crowd slightly warm. It's not, uh, it's not perfect. But, it's alright. So, massive backbreaker, Conrad got planted. Cover! Felcher looks shocked. Conrad counters a sleeper hole by turning into a jawbreaker. Rad Buster, one, two, three. Anthony Bartlett comes... Junior comes running down the aisle with a chair from the announce booth. Um, gets into the ring, hits Conrad with a chair to the back. He goes down to the canvas, hurt. 49%. So, hmm, not quite as good as our last show. But again, we're sort of in the 50% range. That's, that's what we're looking at in terms of uh, programming. Oh no, we lost a customer. <laughs> Uh, we're from 13 down to 12, but we have so many more, um, General and Intakami. Veltra would be a great opponent for me. How about putting us together for some matches? Let's clear all. Well, he asked for it, so... Veltra v... Gen... Maybe. See, this is what I say for maybe. This is when somebody actually tells me, hey, they have good rank chemistry. Felcher General in here basically was just like, hey, why not try that? Which isn't to say that it's not a good idea. Event history. So this one was 49. The other one was... Also 49, so never mind. Our shows are the exact same, although this one is more. 52%. Oh man, our image is going up so much. It's going to be great. And now let's take a look at uh, the feud meter. Um, see, heats on this has already gone up 20 points. Because it started at 33, right? Now it's up to 53. The statistics, battles won. There you go. So, Anthony Bartlett Jr. currently leading Conrad on this score. Um, I forget exactly how many uh, battles they end up having before it's time to finish the feud. I think it's like around 10 or a dozen or so. Um, ambush wins, other wins, other wins. Back. And back. So, let's go ahead and uh, continue forward. Oh, hey, Hazel. And Le, fl le Lut FLI. They had their TV show. Hey. That's all loading up. Uh oh, there's been another big shake up. WWE. Oh, this was SummerSlam. All right. I wonder if SummerSlam is August 17th this year, or August 16th this year. I will have to check with uh, people who might know. I bet I could watch SummerSlam if I uh, wanted to this year. Let's see. Hustle Takeover. 522 people. Russ Haas Memorial. For Russ! Charlie Haas's brother. I believe they were a team together. Before the world's strongest tag team, the world's greatest tag team, I forget. 
I forget what uh, Haas and Benjamin were called now. Was it the world's greatest tag team or the world's strongest tag team? I think it was greatest. Either way. MLW's Deadly Games were tearing apart 904 people. ECW is... Oh, okay, maybe it's just that everybody had a show. Whoa. ECCW were forced to cancel their last show. WLW's Clock Strikes 12 show was attended by 304 people. Steve Carino joined XPW. Glenn Gilberti. Oh man, Glenn Gilberti. He used to be a disco inferno. Guy's awesome. And he has agreed to an open contract with XPW. I'm pretty sure that uh, Glenn Gilberti was disco. ECCW have released Private Rage. Well, yeah, I'd be privately raging, too, if I had to cancel a show. That just seems like poor planning. Let's delete all that mail. Um, actually, yeah, let's go back into the Fed here. Oh, geez, we're still hemorrhaging money, though, guys. What is going on with that? 88750 Down to less than half of my cash. I guess I'm not getting my sponsor money yet. Is that it? Do I only get sponsor money at the end of the month? Hmm. Well, at this rate, we will be in the red before the end of the month. But right now, we're not spending anything on merchandising or advertising, so... Let's go back. Let's go to the finance. Wait, not this finance. Let's go to a meeting with our finance department. They are thinking that a better price for our shows would be $3. Even though they agreed that $10 was good before. Alright, we can deal with that. Let's go to finances. Ticket prices. Make the change. Yeah. Maybe we'll get more people to come to the show. Maybe we'll get that 13th person back. So, so far, our sponsorship money has only been 18000 Do I have this completely wrong and we only get uh, that much money per month from these guys? That's what it's beginning to look like, isn't it? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Tee hee hee. And we have so much money drowned in worker costs right now. We may have to change back to a monthly model, guys. Which I guess wouldn't be the end of the world. It means we could make this feud burn on for longer. Um, as it is, we have uh, already lost $111,000. Loan details. 10,000 per month payment. That would be a, what is this? You get a $100,000 loan. No, I mean, I don't want to do that. So let's go back. I'll go ahead and do the weekly model for a month. See what the expenses are. And oh, extreme mail. Previous, previous. Yeah, these are going to increasingly be just... That's too bad. I was hoping to save money off of... Uh, whoa. I guess a Fed must have... Yeah, Terry Taylor taking control of CZW. I was going to say, there must have been a shake-up in one of the Feds in their management. Rock and Rebel, Chris Cash, Nick Burke. Oh, man. What you gonna do, Nick Burke? Uh, Ruckus is left. Sanjay Dutt. Oh, man. I saw Sanjay Dutt once at a, like an indie show in uh, Waynesboro, Virginia. Years and years back. He, uh, he usually plays face. He was playing heel here. I don't know if that's just because he is Indian American and this was way out in the sticks. And he's like, he's a dirty foreigner. But uh, he was a pretty good asshole heel. Just like, you know, posing all douchey. Z-Bar, Rick Blade, B-Boy, Corey Castle, I don't know any of you guys. Spanky, nice. I know Spanky. 
Spanky's awesome. John Phoenix, Shark Boy, yeah. Sean Stasiak and Jinsei Shinsaki. Okay. Mike Rotundo. I would imagine at this point he would be a road agent or something rather than a wrestler, but uh, who am I to say? Maybe not. Appears to be listed with everybody else. And let's see. Firebird TV and NWA TNA on pay per view. Yeah. I'm going to run out of money here. I guess that's true. I've done a similar situation to this before, but I did it with winning a million dollars, and I think I was able to turn around into profitability before I started losing too much money from being a millionaire. But uh, I don't know if that's as realistic a, a simulation for someone to start a backyard wrestling league. So I guess we'll see what happens. But uh, until next time, folks, this is Bobo the Vulture. This has been uh, Let's Play Extreme Warfare Revenge. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, I like the product we're putting out. Um, the fans of the the, the the butts and seats don't seem to really account for that, but uh, oh well, I guess. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.